hey have a close attention to this video because i want to show you how you can calculate henry fingerprint classification value and this video is more than enough to know how to calculate all of the six divisions of henry before jumping to main slides let's talk about what are the main highlighters of this presentation first of all you are going to know more about the original henry classification system followed by the rules of filling fingerprint card later i will demonstrate you the six divisions and three extensions in detail that are used by fbi after that list of modified versions of henry system that are used by various federal agencies then you will get this ppt that i am demonstrating here lastly you are going to know more about the embedded fingers and how they are classified in henry classification system secondly you are going to get a calculator with the help of that you can calculate the primary classification value of any 10 digit card now moving to the main slides first is the six division in henry classification and it is also known as fbi modified henry fingerprint classification system and there are total six divisions these are first primary secondary sub secondary major final and key and following image is the representation of fbi modified henry fingerprint classification system that starts with the key followed by major primary secondary sub secondary and final apart from this there are three more extensions that are extensively used by fbi first and the most common one is second sub secondary the second one is the wcdx extension that is used majorly for the worlds and the third one is the special loop pattern that is majorly used when the all 10 fingers have loop patterns now what is the original henry classification system as you know it was developed by sir edward richard henry in 1896 and it is also called 10 digit system because it uses all the 10 fingers but do you know how many original henry classification subdivisions are there there was only four major divisions in original henry classification system these were primary secondary sub secondary and final and rest of the two and three extensions are added by fbi to ease the classification and to simplify the search process now moving to the next slide why henry original classification system is not used and why other federal agencies comes with their own modification version to answer these two questions let's check this illustration here you can see that in henry 10 digit fingerprint it uses 10 fingers this means an examiner has to perform 10 more comparison and this process is manually more complex and time consuming and also in 1900s there were no computerized system that's make it more harder to find a single fingerprint in the database and when the database reaches 1 million it becomes practically inefficient to manage because of the complexity and that's the reason why various federal agencies comes with their modified version to simplify this complexity moving to the next slide that is fingerprint classification system originated from fbi there are 12 plus systems that are currently used by various federal agencies for personal identification and to know about the list you just have to google henry classification system or henry fingerprint system and on the first page you will find our website forensicreader.com title with henry fingerprint classification system you just have to click on it and there is a table which listed all the 12 plus countries and their federal agencies that are using henry classification system moving to the next slide which is an example of 10 digit fingerprint card by fbi this is the same fbi card that is used by various federal agencies for registering fingerprints now let's check what are the rules of filling this card rule number 1 writing pattern type pattern type is written at the middle bottom while the rich count and rich trace value sits at the top right corner in this example it is a block from a 10 digit card here you can see it is a wall pattern as per the first point pattern type is written at the middle bottom here the pattern type that is wall is written at the bottom and as per the point 2 rich count and rich trace values are written at the top right corner here you can see the rich trace value is written at the top right corner now moving to the rule number 2 that is designation for index finger and they are designated by capital letters except unknown loops for plain arch it is designated by capital a dented arch is defined by capital t and for radial loop it is capital r and plain whorl is defined by capital w rule number 3 designation for all fingers other than index they are designated by small letters 
but there is also an exception that is the words and unknown loops are not designated by small letters rule number four define the designation of unknown loop they are designated by left slant or right slant loop uh, which is also called forward and backward slash i will tell later in the post what they are and how they are different from each other lastly rule number five designation for bulls they are always written in capital letters so whether they are appear in the index finger or in the ring finger or little finger they are always written in the capital w moving to the next slide that is representing data on the fingerprint card here you can see that the values of the pattern is written at the bottom of the print and the risk trace value or risk count values are written at the top right corner similarly uh, for the unknown loops left slant or right slant lines are used and this process of filling the information in 10 digit card is called blocking the card and it, this is the term that is used by fbi now moving to the real gem of this video presentation that is the six divisions and three extensions of henry fingerprint system and these all are the nine that we are going to discuss and this is the representation of the common six divisions of henry let's start with the primary classification primary classification system classifying fingerprints always start with the primary division when we start classifying fingerprints then we have to first come up with the primary division value and this is a example of henry classification number here you can see that the primary values are at the third position but uh, irrespective to the, their position we have to first come up with the value of primary secondly patterns only world patterns are used and this is why primary classification system is also called world classification third for finger all fingers are used fourth point are values which are based on the world's appearance and for world's specific numeral values are used that i am going to state later in the slides and for other patterns such as tented arch or loop the zero value is assigned now uh, for this the total possible outcomes is 1024 and the highest possible card value is 32 by 32 where all the fingers have world pattern and the lowest possible card value is one by one there is no world pattern are appear now let's check the procedure for the primary classification first is the values for the worlds and these are the values for the worlds respective to their appearance in the finger so if the worlds appear in right ring the value is given by 8 and if the worlds appear in left index the value is given by 2 now let me show you how you can remember this number with ease and uh, you just have to align both your hands like this and start numbering from the right thumb and the value starts from 16 and for right thumb it is also 16 and for the right middle you just have to divide the previous value by 2 so divide 16 by 2 you will get 8 is the 8 in next two fingers and for the next finger you just have to divide 8 by 2 then you will get 4 and 4 then divide 4 by 2 and you will get 2 and 2 and then divide 2 by 2 then you will get 1 and and these values here you can see that all the same values represent a pair so it is pair 1 and it is pair 2 it is pair 3 and it is pair 4 and it is pair 5 and the next step is addition we have to add all even numbered finger values and odd fingered number values and even fingered number values they rest in the numerator and odd number finger values rest in the denominator after adding both of them separately we have to add one that gives our primary classification value now let's do the practice for the primary classification here you can see that this is an 10 digit representation and these are the world's appearance and uh, worlds are appear at the right thumb right middle right ring and left little now the very first step is primary values with respect to world so we have to find the values with respect to worlds so these are the values with respect to their appearance in the 10 digit card moving to the next slide these are the same values that i extracted earlier except one change here you can see that the green represent the odd number finger and orange or you can say skin color represent the even number and for this set of value the primary classification value comes to be 10 by 25 so let's find out how they are come so the step number second is addition so we have to add all the even number finger so the value comes to be 0 8 0 0 plus 1 that gives 9 and the step number 3 is add 1 so we have to add 1 let's give the final primary numerator value 10 Similarly, for a denominator, the we have to add 16, 8, 0, 0, and 0 that gives 24. 
then step number three add one then final denominator value comes to be 25 the primary classification value comes to be n by 25 moving to the next slide that is secondary classification here you can see that in henry classification number the secondary classification value sets after primary and before subsecondary and the rule number one is all patterns on index finger are used as a secondary classification value and they are designated by capital letters pointer number three most common patterns that are used in secondary classification here you can see that the plain arch is represented by capital a ended arch represented by capital t Radial loop is represented by capital r and ulnar loop is represented by capital u and similarly well is represented by capital w and these are the five common patterns that are considered in secondary classification first is plain arch second is standard arch third is right slant loop fourth is left slant loop and fifth is world i will tell later in the post how they are considered as a radial or unlearned loop now the non-common patterns are central pocket loop double loop and accidental walls one key point here is how to write secondary classification numbers so like in primary where we use all even or odd numbers but here the right index pattern values goes into the numerator and uh, left index pattern values goes into the denominator now let's do calculation for the secondary classification and this is the same example that i used for calculating primary classification number that is 10 by 25 now let's calculate the secondary classification value for this so as you know uh, for the secondary classification only index fingers are used so i highlighted these patterns so the first step is finding patterns let's find them in right index here you can see that the loops opening is towards the left of the 10 digit card that's why they are called left slant loop and similarly for right index the opening is towards the left of the 10 digit card that is also makes it a left slant loop so both index fingers have a left slant loop but one is radial and other is unlearned so let's find out which is radial and which is unlearned loop for this i'm going to use this image this represent the right hand and this represent the left hand so let's consider the first scenario here you can see that the opening of the loop is towards the left of the 10 digit card here the opening of the loop is towards the left of the 10 digit card which makes it towards the radial bone which represents the thumb so it is an a radial loop similarly uh, for the left thumb the opening is towards the left of the 10 digit card that makes it also a left slant loop so its opening is towards the ulnar bone that makes it an ulnar loop now moving to the step number two assigning values as you know the right index value always goes into the numerator so capital r goes into the numerator similarly left index under loop is represented by capital u that's values goes into the denominator and these are the same values so for that primary classification value is 10 by 25 and secondary classification value comes to be r slash u and this is how it is represented moving to the next slide that is secondary small letter grouping is a special case and here you can see that in secondary classification value there, there are small letters that are used uh, to name the patterns on their respective finger so let's see how they came the first pointer is some authors group them in secondary while some considered as a part of subsecondary division why it is contradictory because it is a special case and most of the ext extensions that we are going to learn are categorized in sub secondary division however in both the cases whether they are classified in secondary or sub secondary their values are always placed with the secondary classification value now moving to the third uh, pointer that is patterns appears on other than index fingers are used lastly they are designated by small letters so for plain arch it is designated by a and for tented arch small t is used for radial loop small r is used and for in between under loops or walls is indicated by hyphen or you can say that in the absence of atr we use hyphen lastly if small letter group is used in secondary both sub secondary and major division is omitted out here you can see that when we use small letter grouping with secondary then sub secondary values and major divisions values are omitted out so remember this point now moving to the next slide that states the rules of using secondary small letter grouping first rule is only three types of pattern are used as a small letter and i already state all these three rule number two in between words and loops hyphen is used for the absence of atr so in the 
case when the whirls or loops are appear hyphen is used and for first and last finger with loops and whirls are omitted out and the uh, third point is if two in between loops and whirls appears it is only generated by single dash let me explain all these pointers with an example so let's consider it is a right thumb right index right middle right ring and right little so as per the rule hyphen is used for the absence of atr so in case when there is a world here then we use hyphen because there is no atr and point number two first and last fingers with loops and words are omitted out so in case if if right thumb has under loop or word or left thumb has under loop or word they are omitted out finally point number three if we're two in between loops and words they are only designated by single dash so let's say it is a word it is a word so it is represented by dash it is also represented by dash so instead of writing two dash we use a single dash value i hope you understand all these three points of rule number two lastly rule number three for more than one atr so in case when more than one consecutive atr is there then instead of writing 2a we write 2a moving to the practice part for the secondary small letter grouping and the first step is identifying patterns so let's quickly identify them it is an a plain arch it is capital w word it is an tangent arch small t it is a left slant, right slant loop it is a word and it is a left slant loop it is also a left slant loop and it is also a left slant loop it is an a plane arch and it is a world and this is how they are represented moving to the step number two that is writing small letter and these are the small letter values from the previous affected data as you here you can see that the little fingers are omitted these are omitted because they have worlds pattern Similarly, left thumb has another pattern, so it is also omitted. Now, the step three is writing it with the secondary number. For numerator, the value is a w t. They are based on their appearance. And similarly, for denominator, the value is capital U dash a. And this is how it is represented in Henry classification number. Moving to the practice number second for small letter classification. And this is the same ten digit card, except I replace the under loop with an tented arch. So let's quickly identify the patterns. These are the patterns uh, for this candidate card, and this is the extracted form of data. Here you can see that the two T is appear. So the step three is writing with the secondary number. Here the numerator A W two T is used as per the rule number three, and denominator remains the same U capital U dash A, and this is how it is represented in the classification number. Moving to the next slide that represents subsecondary classification, and let's talk about the rules and quickly wrap them. First is rich counting and tracing for the loops and whirls are used. Finger included are index, middle, and ring finger. Numerical values are assigned in corresponding words. And for right hand finger, the values goes into the numerator. For left hand, the values goes into the denominator. Now, uh, letter designation for the rich tracing for whirls. Uh, meeting m meet m value is given when the zero one or two which is inside or outside the right delta and similarly for inner if three or more inside the right delta inner i is given and for three or more ridges outside the right delta it is represented by capital o moving to the letter designation for ridge counting of loops there are three set of values and these are uh, different for index middle and ring finger and these are the values for inner it goes from 1 to 9 and outer 9 plus similarly for middle finger the inner value is 1 to 10 and for outer it's 10 plus and for ring finger the inner value is i which goes from 1 to 13 the outer capital o is given by 13 now let's do the practice set for the subsecondary classification i extracted data from a 10 digit card and these values represent the right hand values and these represent the left hand values and uh, as you know for subsecondary classification only these three fingers are used so let's calculate the value as here you can see that the for world it is two outer so it is given by m and for the right ring we are going to use these values as the value is 14 so it comes in the outer range so its value is capital o similarly uh, for the right ring the value is given by capital o and for left index the values is also comes to be capital o and for world in right middle it is given by m 
because the value is less than 2. Similarly, uh, for the left ring, it is a world whose value is greater than 3, that is 4, and it is inner, so it is represented by capital I. So for numerator, the value will be M O O, and for denominator, the value will be O M I. And this is how it is represented in entry classification number. Moving to the major division classification, and this is how it is represented. Here you can see that the major division value is sets between the key and primary. What are the rules for the major division classification? Rule number one, fingers, patterns on thumb are used. Pattern types are loops and whirls. Rule number three, values, bridge count or trace values for the loops and whirls are used. And rule number four, if small letter group is used, major division and sub-secondary division is omitted out. So let's say if the secondary values has small letter grouping, so in that case, major and sub-secondary values are omitted out. Now moving to the next slide that is major division values uh, for calculation and lateral values for the rich trace of worlds and these are the same values that are used in sub-secondary so for meet the values goes from 0, 1 and 2 for inside and outside of the right delta similarly inner values 3 or more inside the right delta and for O 3 or more outside the right delta. Moving to the letter value for the rich count of the worlds for left thumb, there are three values that is for small, the values goes from 1 to 11, medium, capital M, the value goes from 12 to 16, and for large, capital L, uh, the values goes from 17 or more. But in the case of right thumb, there are two sets of value. Uh, if the ridge count of the left thumb is 16 or less, we use the same value. Now let's assume that the left, left thumb has value of 12 ridge count. Then we use the same left hand values for the right thumb. But let's assume that uh, if the rich count value is comes to be 70, in that case we use case number 2 and these values are employed. Now moving to the practice set for major division. As you know, for major division only thumb values are used. So this is a right thumb and this is the left thumb. And these are the values that we are going to use to calculate the major classification value. As you know, the values of the numerator depends on the denominator. So we have to first calculate the value for the denominator. For denominator here the value is 17. So if the value is 17, it is given by capital L. So it is given by capital L. But as, as per the rule, if the left thumb value is 16 or more, then we use this value. So for the right thumb, uh, the value of rich count is 18. So it falls in medium. So it is given by capital M. And this is how it is represented in Henry classification number. Now move to the practice number two. I deliberately add second practice for major division to help you understand more about the major division and their special cases. And these are the values that we are going to use for the calculation. So as per the rule, we have to first come up with the denominator value. Here you can see that the rich count value for the unknown loop is 15. So it falls in the range of medium. The denominator comes to be capital M. Now for the right thumb, as you know, the value is less than 16. In that case, we use the same values for the right thumb also. The rich count value of the right thumb is 18. So it falls in the large L group. So it is written by capital L. And this is how it is represented in Henry classification. Moving to the next slide, that is final classification. And this is an example of Henry classification number. And here you can see that the final classification value sits at the last of the entry classification number. Now let's quickly wrap the rules for that. Uh, fingers, little fingers of one hand is used. Patterns, loops, and if loops are missing, worlds are used. And for values, rich counting for loops and worlds are used. Numerator is given by the right hand value and uh, denominator is given by the left hand value. Now the pointer number six is preference. Uh, here the right little fingers is given preference and if right finger doesn't have loop then we are seeking the patterns on the left little finger. Lastly in case when the loops are absent on both little fingers then we use word and they are treated as under loop. So for the words on the right hand uh, counted from the left delta to core and for the left hand Counts, rich counts are made from the right delta to co. At last, if the loops and worlds are absent, uh, so in case when the, there is neither the loops and nor the worlds, in that case, the, there is no final classification. Moving to the final classification practice session, here you can see that for final classification, we only use little fingers, and this is the right little finger, and this is the 
left little finger. However, we always give preference to the right little finger in case of loops. But in this case, the loop is missing in the right. So we use the values of the left little finger. Here in the numerator, the loop is missing. So we use the values for the denominator that gives 12. And this is how it is represented. Here you can see that the numerator remains empty and the value for the final goes into the denominator side of the handy classification. Now the last classification of fingerprint is key and this is how it is represented. Here you can see that the value of key classification always comes first in the handy classification number and these are the rules. Rule number one, a value sits at the front of the handy classification number. I already told that. Rich count the first loop that appears on the card. So the first uh, rich count value that uh, appears on the 10 digit card represent the key value. But here is an exception. We have to eliminate the loops on the little fingers because they are already included in the final. That's why they are not included little fingers in key. And these uh, values are always goes into the numerator. So irrespective of which hand they appear, the values are always goes into the numerator. Moving to the key classification practice. And these are the values for the right hand and left hand. Here you can see that uh, I highlighted the all the loops that appears in this 10 digit card because key classification only uses which counting values for the loops. The key classification value is given in the numerator by the rich count of the first loop that appears in the card and the first loop that appears in the card is 18. So the value comes to be 18. Now let's assume that if it is a word, so in that case we are going to use this value and again let's assume that it is also a word then we use this value. This is how it is represented. This is the value uh, for this key classification. Now moving to the extension one that is second subsecondary classification. It is the most common extension that is used by FBI and this is how it is represented. The value of second subsecondary goes above the subsecondary classification. And this is how it is represented in FBI classification number. Let's fastly wrap the rules. First fingers used are index, middle and ring fingers. Designated with capital letters, capital S, capital M and capital L are used. Similarly, uh, position, I already told that uh, they are placed above the subsecondary classification value and patterns are used are loops. And for numerator values, right hand values are used and for denominator, left index, middle or ring fingers are used. Moving to the next slide, that is second subsecondary classification values and these are the values. You just take a screenshot of this or you just Go to our website and search for second subsecondary. You will find the article and you will get this table. And finally, this is how it is represented in Henry classification number that are used by FBI. Moving to the extension two, that is WCDX extension. Let's quickly wrap the rules. First, finger used are all fingers numerator. Right hand fingers are used. Denominator, left hand fingers are used. And the fourth pointer is position. They are placed above the subsecondary classification. Rule number five pattern. Worlds patterns are used and all types of world patterns are used whether they are accidental or double loop. Uh, similarly, uh, for values, both capital and small letter values are used. Lastly, application, they are majorly used for the larger primary classification such as 32 by 32. And this is how it is represented and their values are sets above the subsecondary. And here you can see that the primary values belongs to a larger group. Now moving to the extension number three that is spatial loop extension and this is how it is represented. Rule number one, index, middle and ring fingers are used and in some cases left little fingers are also employed. For numerator, right hand finger values are used and for denominator, left hand. Position above the values of subsecondary classification, here you can see that like other two extensions, their value is also uh, placed right above the subsecondary. Now the fifth rule is about the pattern where loops are used. Lastly, they are applicable to the smaller primary groups like 101. Here you can also see that they are majorly applicable when the primary group values belongs to the smaller group. Now, this slide states the spatial loop values with respect to the rich count value. So in case if the loop count value comes to be 15, then it's fall into the this group and the spatial loop value will be 4. And these are the resources for you. Uh, first of all, you are going to get various federal agencies names along with their country that uses and modified version. After that, you are going to get a worksheet for the 60 divisions and three extensions. After that, you will get the PDF version of this PPT. And finally, you will get the calculator 
with the help of that you can calculate the primary classification value and for getting all these scores you just have to google henry fingerprint system just click on the our website forensicleader.com that will with the henry fingerprint classification system just click on the link and after that you will have to hover to the table of content and in the first section you will get your calculator for section you will get to know more about the how to fill 10 digit fingerprint card in fifth section you are going to get the table for the various agencies that uses henry modified version and from section 5.2 to 5.8 you will get the worksheet and just follow the link in the note section and lastly at 6 point you will get the ppt of this presentation and that's the end of this video i hope my illustrations help you to understand the henry classification system and if you still have any question you can ask them in the comment section i am happy to answer you and if you like this video presentation please consider subscribing thank you